Hey there! In a previous video, I showed you how to track HubSpot form submissions using Google Tag Manager. And I received a question asking how can you track separate forms? So if you have a contact form, a download form, a demo form, and so on, how can you distinguish these forms using the same setup? So HubSpot form and Tag Manager for data tracking and collection. So this is what I want to show you today. And I'm not going to walk you through the entire process because I already showed the first part, like how to track HubSpot form in general. I showed that in the previous video. So I'm going to link to it below so you can go and watch that video instead. This time I want to show you how to distinguish the forms. So this video is going to be a little bit shorter. You can now see my screen and I'm in Google Tag Manager and I have my HubSpot form open as well. I'm going to work with the contact form. So you see here that I have my previous event, so the form submission listener, and I created a new one for the contact form submission listener because I want to isolate this particular form. I will just open this and show you the code snippet. This is the same script that I used in the previous video for the general forms, like to capture all the forms or to listen to all the forms. However, I added one little piece of code and that is this one, the event data ID. And I do this because I want to only capture or to only listen to the form that has this specific ID. And you see that I am firing this event only for the form ID B5 and so on. So I will show you where I got that ID from. If I go to my HubSpot form, uh, I can do this in two different ways. So I can either click here, edit form. Then I can go to embed. And from here, click embed code and go to form ID. You can either copy it from here, but it's a bit annoying because it will copy all the code snippet. So I prefer to do it in a different way. If I go back to my forms and take the contact form and then here in actions, I click view, view form. And then I have my form. I do right click and then inspect. And with this, then I go to form ID here to isolate the form. And I take this data form ID. So not the first one, not form ID that starts with HS form and so on. But this one, data form ID. So I just copy paste this one. It's already here, but I'll do it again just to show you. So I have my form ID now. And this uh, form listener, I let, let it trigger on all the pages, although I could also isolate here and trigger it only on the contact page. I'm not going to do that now. It's not necessary. All right. So I have now the contact form submission listener. Then, of course, I need a trigger for this. So I have it here set up for contact form success. When the form is successfully submitted, the event name is HubSpot form success, and this is just coming from HubSpot. I explained it in the previous video, so please go ahead and watch that video if you don't understand the, the process. And I am only triggering this form success event for the form that has this ID. And here I used the data layer variable created in the previous video instead of the form ID. Uh, you can also do it with the page path if your page path stays the same. If you are redirecting users, for example, from a contact page to a thank you page, then you cannot use the form. You cannot use the page URL because the page URL will change. So you cannot set it on the page URL contact or so. This thing is important the HubSpot form success as the event name. And then the last thing here we have. We want to send the successful submission. We want to send it to uh, GA4 as well. So I created the contact form success event in the same way that I had the HubSpot form success for all the forms. And here 
you see that the event name is generate lead. It is just created by me. You can name it whatever you want, but it's quite clean. Uh, and then the the trigger actually here is not HubSpot form success. So I'm going to remove this one and get the contact form success because I want to send only the contact event. That's pretty much it. You can repeat this process for all your other forms. And like I mentioned, if you haven't watched the previous video, I will link it below. Go ahead and watch it and feel free to post your questions in the comment section if anything is not clear. Thanks a lot for watching. If you found this useful, please like the video and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.